Welcome to Homestead Reptile, and today I want to talk to you guys about the Valley Garter Snake. This is a truly amazing species. They're a lot of fun to keep. Now, the Valley Garter Snake is in the family of colubrids. All garter snakes are. They are nitrocene, so some interesting things. So, garter snakes have keloid scales. They have relatively large scales. They have relatively large eyes. The tip of their tongue, the forked tip of their tongue, is black. The rest of it's pink. So, that's just some interesting things about garter snakes in general. Now, all garter snakes, including the valley garter snake, are oviparous, oper meaning they bear bearing live young. They have a usual gestation period of two to three months, and they can have anywhere between four to 80 baby babies. A little bit about their natural history. So the valley garter snake are found in um, the central coast throughout northern California. So they have a pretty wide range there, but they're just there. Now, the valley garter snake is a black snake with a red to orange striping or checkering down the side. They have a yellow stripe on the dorsal and they have those two stripes on the side. So there can be variation in that natural geographic area. So you can have brighter, you can have duller, and there are some interesting oddballs out there. There are granite valley garters, um, I believe there are solid black ones as well, but there's a variety in the valley garters themselves. So they live throughout that area and the habitat they inhabit is pretty wide. So there are grasslands they inhabit, they inhabit marshes, they inhabit forests. They can live anywhere where there is a source of water. So in nature, their natural diet, they eat fish, they eat Lots of different types of poison Pacific newts, frogs, toads, tadpoles, small mammals, reptiles, worms, and slugs. A fun fact, so I mentioned they eat poisonous newts. So the valley garter snake retains that toxin from the newt. And it can retain it for up to a couple of weeks, very similar to dart frogs. So it retains that toxin. And if something eats a valley garter snake, it will get very sick. Same way it would have if it ate that newt. So they are also venomous. So the valley garter snake has a mild venom. Um, no concern to humans at all. They can also have a lifespan. This is in captivity of 15 to 20 years. So they're a relatively long-lived snake. So potentially you can have this animal for 15 to 20 years. And that's something to keep in mind of an animal that you're going to have for this long so valley garter snakes aren't necessarily very large. They're a pretty small snake compared to the species that are really common. So ball pythons, a female ball python gets up, what, about six feet. Males about three to four feet. Um, corn snakes get also, they're not very big, but they're bigger than a garter snake. So compared to those more popular species, they're pretty small and they can live in a relatively small enclosure. Now... Let's talk a little bit about feeding in captivity. So you can feed a wide variety of foods. And the thing I love about garter snake is you do not have to feed rodents. I actually don't think it's a good idea to have a diet that is completely rodent. Because they do not eat that way in the wild at all. Their diet is a small percentage rodent. So you can have your valley garter snake never eat a rodent in its life. And it will live perfectly fine. Rodents, most of the time, are too fatty. And the way they eat... Now, Valley Garter Snakes, if you ever watch... If you're watching her eating right now, she's not constricting her prey. She overpowers her worms, her silver sides, her fish, whatever she's going to eat, and she pushes it down her throat. Rodents, it would have to be a rodent that they would eat in the wild that they can overpower and just with the power of their mouth. Um... Most other snakes that have a more of a diet of rodents wrap, constrict their prey, and then they eat it. So a little bit of their diet that you can feed in captivity. You can feed night crawlers. Night crawlers are perfectly fine. All my garter snakes love night crawlers. It's garter snake crack. They love it. Do not feed red wigglers. Do not. Red wigglers are toxic. I'll put in some, a photo of a night crawler versus a red wiggler something else to keep in mind if you're going to feed night crawlers you can go to a bait shop you can go to a pet shop doesn't matter i prefer bait shops because they're cheaper and i can get a larger quantity 
So the pet shop and the bait shop get their night crawlers from the same distributor. There's no difference. I've had people say that you should always go for the pet shop night crawlers because the bait shop night crawlers are there's something weird with them that might they're toxic they're dyed as long as you're getting pure night crawlers that they didn't like dye them or anything they're perfectly fine they get them from the same exact place now let's talk about fish so they can eat a wide variety of fish so silver size bluegill salmon trout do not i mean do not feed goldfish rosy med Rosy red minnows, or what they're also called, rosy red minnows are actually a fathead minnow. So do not feed fathead rosy head minnows. Do not. They are toxic in large quantities. So they, co they contain thymine. And thymine is an enzyme that binds um, vitamin B1. It can lead to snakes having seizures and passing away. So this happens over time with them eating a large amount of this fish. It's cheap. Do not feed it to them. If you want to feed live fish, I suggest guppies, platys, swordtails, and mollies. Those are perfectly fine. But there's a lot of fish that do not have thymidine. Just look it up. Google it. There's a giant list. I'll leave a link in the description on um, this website. You can look at all, all the safe fish and you can just Google it yourself. All right. You can also feed chicken liver, chicken heart, and frog legs. You can also do rept reptilink. So reptilink has a lot of good stuff in it that you can also feed your garter snakes. Housing. Housing is relatively simple. So an adult valley garter snake, a female and a male, you can go for a 30 high to a 75 gallon. It really depends on what you want to do. So a female can reach up to 55 inches and a male can reach up to 18 inches. So there's give or take. Some might be bigger, some might be smaller. Um, they need that space. They want height and they want length. So give them height and length for them to climb and explore. They need a basking spot of 90 to 95, a cooler end of 70, 60 to 70. You want that temperature gradient. You also want a, a large bowl of water that they can submerge and uh, shed properly. So they are somewhat of an aquatic snake, but they also enjoy climbing. So give them a lot of room to climb and enjoy. They're a very active snake. Also, they are diurnal, so you might want to give them UVB. So you don't have to give them UVB, but they... I think they would get some use out of it, especially since they are a diurnal basking snake. So these guys appreciate that stuff. They also need buddies. I do not think it's appropriate not to allow your garter snake to have a buddy. So if you don't want breeding, just get two males or two females. Perfectly fine. The more garter snakes you have, the happier they are. I, I personally think they would do better in a trio which I'm looking out for a, another female garter snake to add to my group later down the road. But right now I just have a pair, my male and my female. My female, that's her right here, she is just a lot more bubbly in her personality. She's very interested in what I'm doing. She was okay with me taking her out, putting her in a photo box, and watching her eat the whole time. She's fine with it. She's cool with it. My male would not have liked that. He's a shyer eater. And she brings him out of his, out of his bubble. Without her, he'd be a much more scary cat garter snake. So they need buddies. It's been scientifically proven that garter snakes are a social species of snake. And they need companionship. So have at least two to three garter snakes. So the more the merrier it is with a garter snake. Again, they need buddies. Cohab your garter snakes with other garter snakes. And you can technically cohab garter snakes with other species of garter snake as long as their care is the exact same. Most garter snakes' care is pretty much the same because they overlap in range. So you could technically have a valley garter snake and a California red side garter snake. They could technically live there together. Or a California red garter red sided garter snake and a checkered garter snake. You just wouldn't want to encourage breeding. So you'd have a either a complete male group or a complete female group. Again, great species, a lot of fun. There's only a few downsides musking, but they get over that as soon as you handle them more and have a good relationship with them. Mine have never musked on me. Mine have never bitten me. They're perfectly fine lovely snakes and I encourage others to get them. They're great. I hope this was an informative video. Please leave a like.